Okay, let's discuss LRC circuit. Here's the LRC circuit, but we start by charging the capacitor. So let me just say this. If you're not um, confident about RC circuits, LR circuits, or LC circuits, you should go back and study that. Otherwise, you may not be able to follow what I'm going to discuss here. So uh, the first thing we do is we close the switch here. I can't change the drawing, so you got to imagine that the switch is lowered and closed. And what will happen is the battery will drive current through the resistor onto the capacitor. The capacitor will charge. As the capacitor charges, the voltage across the capacitor goes up. The current will go down. The voltage across the resistor will go down. And the capacitor will charge. So let's just take... Let's take a look at that. This is the graph of the charge on the capacitor. The time constant is RC. So you're familiar with this behavior, right? So let's go back to the circuit. The switch is closed. Whoops. Whoops. Switch is closed here. The capacitor's charged. The current is now zero. And the circuit isn't changing anymore. Now we close the switch down. When the switch is closed down here, the battery is now cut out of the circuit. And we have our the switch closed here. The capacitor will drive current through the battery, uh, through the inductor, through the resistor, and the capacitor will discharge. As after the capacitor discharges, the current through the inductor will keep the current going and it'll recharge the capacitor positive on this side, negative on this side in the opposite sense. And so if we look at the charge on the capacitor, it will oscillate between being positively charged here and positively charged here. And the current will oscillate between rising in this direction, stopping, rising in this direction. And as the current oscillates, the capacitor gets charged back and forth. So that's our LC circuit, an oscillating circuit described by a cosine function. But in this case, we have a resistor. So as it oscillates back and forth, the current will gradually die out because all the energy will be released by the resistor. So that's our LRC circuit with the switch closed here. So if we think of the LC circuit without the R in it, we see this behavior. A simple oscillating circuit. The charge on the capacitor starts high, goes to zero, goes negative, goes back to zero, recharges to where it originally was, and oscillates back and forth. It oscillates with an angular frequency omega. The angular frequency is 2 pi over the period. If we wanted to calculate the period, the time of one cycle, we have this equation that does it. And no surprise, the period of oscillation depends on the value of the inductor and the capacitor. Okay, but now what we've done is we put a resistor in the circuit. So as it oscillates back and forth, the oscillation is going to die out. Sometimes called a damp, a damped oscillator, and that is a combination of both behaviors. So the oscillating valve, whoops, the oscillating value gradually dies out. 
but it dies out exponentially. So you see what we're getting is, in this graph, we're getting a combination of these two graphs. The oscillation of the LC circuit and the damping out, right? It's actually a damping out, not a charging, of the energy, the current, and the charge on the capacitor as it goes to zero. And so when we look at the equation that describes this behavior, we look at the charge on the capacitor as a function of time. It starts at Q max. That Q max varies according to a cosine function, but it's multiplied by an exponentially decaying function. So both those behaviors in, con uh, in combination. This shows the exponential decay of the charge across the capacitor, and this shows the oscillating value. Now, the time constant for the decay is slightly different from what we're used to. The time constant is 2L over R, and the angular frequency of the decay has a little W. You'll see that on the equation sheet because the angular frequency is the damped angular frequency. So let's take a look at those equations. Let's bring those down and maybe I'll leave this a little bit expanded so we can see that and we'll open up these equations. So these are the equations that you use for calculations but try to understand the physics behind the equation. So period is 1 over the frequency, which is 2 pi over the angular frequency. In other words, the angular frequency is 2 pi over t. Think about it. It makes sense. Uh, a cycling system will go through one cycle will be 2 pi radians in a time, which is the period. That ends up being, for the LC circuit, 1 over LC. The time constant for the resistor capacitor circuit that we saw in the first case, this one, is uh, RC. If we had an inductor circuit, the time constant L over R, and the time constant for this circuit slightly different. I can't explain the 2 right now, but it's 2L over R. So how about this frequency? If we want to get the period of this, if we want to know that would be the period, right? If we want to know that, we need to multiply 2 by 2 pi um, over the frequency. So in this case, it's the damped frequency. How do you get the damped frequency? This is the equation. So take a look at this. You can put the numbers in there and calculate it. But look at the physics um, inside this equation. So you have 1 over LC minus this factor squared to the 1 half power. So what the 1 over LC is, is the 1 over LC is 2 pi over t squared. So that's the period, that's the um, oscillating part of the function. And here's the time constant part, 1 over t squared. So how does the 1 over t become that? Look, t is 2L over r. If you take 1 over t, you have L over 2r. And so we take these two frequency or peri or time values and we square them and take the square root kind of like a Pythagorean theorem idea that in order to get the uh, hypotenuse of a triangle you square the two sides and take the square root. So that's our LRC circuit.